Well, hi everybody, it's Kevin. And Marianne behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade at Home, Cavalcade of Food. And um, I get questions all the time in the email about uh, certain kitchen prep stuff, Mayor. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll try doing more of it. And, you know, for, for me and for a lot of our food friends who have spent plenty of time in the kitchen, there are things that we just do that we don't think much about. But I'm always happy when there are people who watch who maybe haven't a lot of experience in the kitchen, but they, they like it and they want to do more and know more. So uh, this is going to be one of these just little quick kind of kitchen um, procedural things. And we're in summertime and we always have companies stopping by, don't we, Mayor? Yes, we do. And often when folks are over and we have a beautiful day like we have today here in Michigan's Thumb, um, we sit outside on the patio where I have a, uh, a nice big table with an umbrella over it. And of course, the snacks and the drinks come out, don't they, Mayor? Yes. Uh, so whenever people are gathered, that is always a time to celebrate with food and drink. So I put out an assortment of things for company that I always like to keep on hand. And we've got some salty snacks like pretzels and things like that. And I always have nuts, almonds or peanuts or cashews, things like that. Maybe some kind of cheese um, and crackers is always nice. Some sort of fresh fruit, cut up watermelon, uh, cantaloupe, or even just some really beautiful grapes. Um, when they are sweet and in season and all these things are starting to come into season or soon we'll have cherries won't we Mayor? which is always yeah. a favorite to put out and I also like to always put out some raw vegetables and I have found that over the years the raw veggies Mayor, are actually becoming more and more popular we had some friends over a couple weeks ago and I put out they ate those things up we didn't have any left, which I love, no leftovers. Um, and so I usually do a trio of things. And my, my standby trio is celery, carrots, and radishes. Okay, I love, you've got orange, red, and green. The colors are beautiful. And um, they generally are things that most people like. I know Marianne's not a fan of the radish, are you, honey? No, a little bit too hot. A little me. too hot. I, on the other hand, eat her share because I love radishes. And radishes go beautiful with certain kinds of cheeses, especially if you have a very creamy cheese that you might put out, like a brie or a, a Saint Andre or something like that, a camembert, something that's a really creamy type cheese, the little bite of the radish and the crunch of the radish go beautifully. Anyways, um, maybe we should do a cheese episode, Mayor. What do you think? Yeah. That'd be fun. So let's start with the celery. First of all, when you get ready to cut up vegetables, wash everything. Okay, wash the vegetables. I know they look fine. They're in plastic or whatever, but believe me, they need to be washed. So give everything a good wash in the, in the sink um, uh, before you cut into them. So celery, you can buy the hearts of celery or you can buy a standard celery stalk. This is a standard stalk and that's what I got. Um, with the hearts of celery, you're just sort of getting the inside. I'm gonna cut this here. Now, if I was going to be making some soup or something like that, I would want this for my stock or chicken stock or whatever. Mmm, love it. Okay, then with the celery, you want to make sure, because the celery grows up like this, you want to make sure that when you washed it, you got all the sand and dirt that may have gotten down inside this part here. 
Um, and it looks like I got most of that out, and I'll see if there's any that need to be rewashed. The leaves I love. I love the taste of celery leaves. They are great in soups, and they're great for garnish. So I usually keep the leaves, and I just wrap them in a damp paper towel and keep them in the fridge. So here we are sort of at the heart part of the celery, and I just want to get down to uh, these little pieces. Again, chop them up. They're great in stock. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm not going to do all these, but I'm going to do some of them. So let me put some over here. So as an example, first of all, use sharp knives when you're cutting up stuff, especially vegetables like this. Uh, and if you have knives and, if you, and you have a knife sharpener, use it. Um, keep your knives sharp. Uh, makes makes a big difference. So with celery, all right, we cut off the end. I'm also going to cut off this tip here. That isn't good for anything in terms of what we're using it for. Then depending on the size of the individual uh, stem, you can see this is fairly wide, right, Mayor? Right. So what I'm going to do, now I switch to a paring knife, um, is I'm going to cut that right down the middle, like so. And we'll do it this one here as well. Cut it right down the middle. And this one. People don't like to take big chunks of stuff. If you can make keep things small, um, that's great. Now, the question is, how do you cut it? For these full-length stems, I cut it into thirds. I find halves are a little bit too long. So if I cut it into thirds, they fit beautifully in my relish tray. And here you go. Mmm. Love the crunch. I put all my veggies in here cut up and ready to go. So that's the celery. Now the inner stems are more narrow. So you know what? You don't have to split those down the middle. You can just cut them into smaller pieces like that. Next are carrots. Now, I know my sister likes her carrots, don't you? Yes. And I do too. Um, here's the thing. You can buy the baby carrots. They're in the store. Baby carrots, I guess, are better than no carrots. But you know what I found, Mayor? They're short on flavor. You ever notice that? Yeah. Um, and they're just shaved down carrots that were either abnormally sized or shaped or whatever. And so that's how they use them up, and they make these baby carrots. I mean, they are carrots, don't get me wrong, but I, I will swear they don't taste as good as a, a good old-fashioned carrot. Now, I peel, for, for eating raw like this, I do like to peel. Some people keep the peel on because there's a lot of nutrients in the peel. Um, and if you want to keep the peel on, by all means, do so. Um, I take it off. It just, you know what, it's more of an aesthetic thing than anything else. So I peel the carrot. Now, you've got a um, really big end there. I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to cut the bottom end of the carrot there. Then... Mayor, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this carrot into thirds. Let's start with this big chunk. Well, first of all, the carrot's round. So we want to cut it so that it's easier to slice up into sticks. So first we're going to cut it in half like so. Well, guess what? Now you have a flat edge. You see that, Mayor? Yeah. And that means you can put it on your board and it ain't going to roll around. And you don't want things rolling when you're cutting them with a sharp knife. Right, Mayor? Right. So then you go like this. Then 
Now this is, a, I'm going to get three sticks out of that carrot. And we're going to cut it once and we're going to cut it twice. And here I got three nice carrot sticks like that. This one I'm actually going to cut again. You know what? Cut it in the size that you like. Wow, these are sweet. And I'll tell you, 10 times the flavor of a baby carrot. Just saying. Okay, here's the centerpiece. I'm going to cut this, those in half like so. So we have four sticks. And then the smallest piece also will cut. They don't all have to be the same size. It's so funny. Certain people go for certain. It's amazing the patterns you see when you entertain a lot and you put out similar things all the time. Some people will always look for the smallest piece to take and others will look for the biggest piece to take. You ever notice that, Mara? Yeah. Um, it's just funny. It's what they like. All right. So there's our carrots. Now let's talk radish. So radishes are a wonderful vegetable. Again, they're a root vegetable like a carrot. They grow in the ground. Sometimes you can buy them with the leaves and stems still on them. Uh, and if that's how you prefer to buy them, do that. The store didn't have those. They just had a bag of carrots in assorted sizes. And sometimes they're kind of oblong like this, and sometimes they're, they're round like this, and sometimes they're small like this. But this is where you use your paring knife. And so this is the end where the stem was attached. We're going to come and make a slice like that. Then you've got the root end, which you don't want either. We're going to make another slice like that. And now you have, what a beautiful contrast you have with the bright red exterior and the, the um, snowy white interior. So we're going to cut this radish. And again, you'll often see here, sometimes there's some red in the center, which really makes it pretty. You can cut this radish any way that you want to do it. I'm going to cut it into quarters so that we've got pieces like this. Mm. Oh, this one's got a little bite to it, Mayor. Um, sometimes they're really mild, almost bland. But again, you want to cut the radish so that it's flat when you're cutting it. You're cutting it on a flat side. Also, I have found what's nice to put next to the radishes sometimes is a little shaker of salt or like seasoned salt. And um, that's nice on a radish as well. So when you get an oblong one here, you're going to do it the same way. You're going to cut off that root end. You're going to cut off the a stem end and then we're going to we've got it on a flat side we're going to cut it like that you could leave it in halves you could make it into quarters like this whatever size you want real easy this is one of the easiest things to prepare and you know one of the best sometimes when they're this big frankly I just leave them as is because to me this is just a bite but Somebody else may just want to take a half. And again, I keep them all in here. You can take um, a paper towel, get it wet, squeeze it out so that it's just damp, lay that on top, and then put the lid. A little bit of moisture in the vegetables sometimes helps um, so that they don't get too dried out. Um, but they're at the ready. So when company comes over uh, unexpected, as is often the case here, people drop by. It doesn't, it doesn't take but a, a gif to put together a quick veggie uh, platter um, along with some uh, other accoutrement, should we say, Mayor? That's French. Um, and um, 
if you want, some people like to serve it with a dip. By all means, if you have that on hand. I almost never have um, like a ranch dip or something like that. I, it's not generally something I have on hand. And certainly when people come by, um, it isn't something you have time to make. So I just put the vegetables out raw, like I said, maybe with a little salt shaker, um, but with other things, cheeses and nuts and fruits. And talk about a perfect little summer snack. But eat your vegetables. Uh, and in some cases, uh, raw vegetables taste better even than cooked vegetables. You know that, Mayor? I think so, for some. You certainly get more of the flavor. I know people, for a while, juicing was a big craze. And while juice is great, it's not the same as eating the, whole, the real thing. Um, anyway, so this is a way to get some more vegetables in our diet, which I think we probably all need. So that's all there is to it. Um, let me thank my, my little sister You're for welcome. working the camera. Thanks, Toots. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll remind our friends of the website. Do you know what it is, Mayor? Cavalcadefood.com. That's right. It's right there on the screen. And um, we hope everyone's summer is going great. Ours is off to a wonderful start. And we will look forward to seeing you again soon here on Cavalcade of Food. And until then, be well, everybody, and take care. Bye. Bye.